This third set on integrated pest management technologies is on disease control. You've all had seen the disease uh, triangle if you've taken um, plant pathology, or you're probably going to see it next semester. And there are three parts of the disease complex that we have to have. We have the host plant, where the disease is going to infect. We have to have the environment that predisposes the host plant to a disease. And to have a disease, we have to have a pathogen. And it's usually formed in the form of a triangle. And we can't have disease without these three functions. And they all work together. You know, we can sometimes control a disease by controlling the environment, control the disease by eliminating the pathogen, or we can choose a host plant maybe that's more resistant to that disease. So some of the environmental and cultural factors that set us up for diseases, and just to kind of let you know, if you're working with alternative crops, you're probably going to have set yourself up for a high potential of fungal infections or bacterial infections because you really don't know what the crop is susceptible to. And we can also choose alternative crops to reduce. You know, if we've got a high disease outbreak from uh, in spated, in, in patients with chronic spot virus, we can choose an alternative crop that maybe is not susceptible to that virus. Computerized controls, it, we can use those. It has a high degree of efficacy of controlling fungal infestations because we can change our environment. Bacteria, not so much. Fertility, we can control uh, our bacterial infections quite well by monitoring our fer fertility practices and using not growing our plants to be excessively soft or something like that. Growing media has a high potential of control of fungi, especially our soul born, by using, we can use products such as trichoderma, is an organism that, that we can colonize our root system with to prevent fungal infestations, or we can pasteurize it. Of course, by controlling our humidity, ventilation, and condensation, we have a high efficacy on controlling diseases, irrigation, and humidity goes together. Pathogen-free plants, choosing plants that are already screened for pathogens. Resistant cultivars, somewhat. Temperature, of course, is going to control a lot of organisms. One of the things that's important to know about controlling diseases is understanding what the fungicides are that we're going to use. Now, I don't expect you to memorize all these classes of fungicides, these are called families. And some of the families, such as our aromatics, these are uh, chlorothalonil, piperlin, pentachlorobenzenes. Um, these are typically fungicides. In other words, they kill the fungus. Where some of our other products are actually fungistats. Like a fungistat means it's going to prevent the outbreak. Um, thiophanate methyls and such, those are typically, these are some of the products that we call fungistats. Botanical fungis, fungicide products, um, those are typically the neems, neem oils and such as that. Those are actually ex extracts. Um, ethylene uh, bis dithiocarbamates, um, these are some of the older fungicides that have been around for a long time, many, many of them going away. Halogen halogenated hydrocarbons, such as methyl bromide, is going away. Captan, but the only people that can use captan anymore are the um, residential gardeners. <laughs> um, inorganic bicarbonates, uh, potassium bicarbonate, uh, that's been used by the grape growers for centuries. Um, mycopesticides, these are some of the newest products that we're coming out with. The mycopesticides are um, actually organisms that 
eat other organisms and we use those uh, to control our fungal outbreaks. Probably the most common ones are trichoderma and gliocladium. Streptomyces is a bacterium that we use to control things like um, uh, Irwinia infestations. Inorganics like sulfur, we talked about that with burning of the soil, burning of sulfurs. Stylet oil is a organic product. It's stylet oil is, is basically uh, a very fine grade oil that we can spray on our foliages and will kill some of the microorganisms. Um, most of the research now is on sterol inhibitors. Um, these are uh, products that actually interfere with the, the fungicide development. So some of the diseases we have to deal with in our crops, um, viruses are one of them. Uh, Tospo viruses, uh, such as impatience necrotic spot virus or tomato spotted wilt virus, these are actually vectored by the western flower thrips. You control the western flower thrips, you control the Tospo virus. If you get a Tospo virus infestation in your greenhouse, typically the only way you can get rid of it is to throw it away and control your thrips. This past summer, the gardeners in Colorado had an amazingly difficult time with Tospo viruses. It was widespread across the front range because of the western flower thrips. Um, there's nothing you can do to control it except control the thrips. Other viruses include uh, tobacco mosaic virus. The easiest way to control tobacco mosaic virus is to have your employees wash their hands after they eat or smoke. Um, some viruses like um, this geranium Tom RSVP, RSV virus uh, on geranium, actually we see it irregularly, it just comes along. Um, not a whole lot you can do about it except use disease-free stock material. <coughs> Next after the viruses are your bacterial diseases, and most of the bacterial diseases we get in the greenhouses are bacterial wilt. There's two common ones. One is Xanthomonas pelargoni. The other one is Ralstonia solanoserum. Um, the Ralstonis, Ralstonia solanoserum is typically, you see um, these uh, triangular lesions, and it, uh, the BioVar 3 is uh, actually a I considered a bioterrorist agent. Xanthomonas pelargoni, once you get into the soil, these are soil-borne, both of these are soil-borne bacteria that get into the vascular system and cause a wilt. Um, the only way you can control this is through pasteurization of your media. And if it gets into your ground beds outside, you have to cycle out of geraniums for about three years. Fungal diseases are by and far our most common microorganisms we deal with in the greenhouse. Uh, the most common is uh, powdery mildew. It's a foliar uh, product, foliar uh, disease. Uh, powdery mildew is an obligate parasite. In other words, the fungal infestation on these roses, the Spherotheca rosei, will not infect another genus. So it's specific to that genus. Um, powdery mildew is one of those diseases that we can control with climate. The easiest way to control powdery mildew in a rose house is as the sun goes down, open the vents and turn the heat on. So we're lowering the humidity in our greenhouse. Does it sound like it's energy inefficient? Yes, it is energy inefficient. But what costs more money? The fuel that you've just burned dehumidifying that greenhouse, or the amount of money it's gonna cost you to buy the pesticide, have an employee suit up in protective gear and spray the greenhouse, which is gonna cost you more money. Is there any good way to control that outdoors besides for spraying? Is there any way to control it outdoors? Yeah, when I was back in New York, we were doing outdoors, like I, we had a big problem with probably Well, that's probably on cucurbits, right? Squash and cucumbers? Yeah. The way to control that in crops like that is to use uh, more resistant cultivars. Yeah. So move to a drier climate than New York. 
There's two kinds of controls we can use. We can use eradicants and protectants. Protectants are fungistats, eradicants are fungicides. Um, what the rose growers used to do once or twice a week is just go in there and just spray cold water on the plants and knock the fungus off and just keep the fungus, fungus, the fungus development off. That's a pretty heavy outbreak of powdery mildew. And as is here. Say that again? Isn't it easier for it to transfer once you spray it with water? Isn't that how it Are you gonna spray you're gonna blast the spores everywhere? Yeah. Well you could, but that by, by but but knocking it back on a regular basis keeps it under control. It's just a practice that some people use that don't want to <coughs> buy pesticides. Another foliar organism is downy mildew. It's a different organism. It's common on, this is salvia and uh, snapdragons. And see the lesions on the top side of the leaf, but on the underside of the leaf, um, you'll see these massive purplish spore development and also this uh, um, contorted tissue on these snapdragons. Downy mildew is one of, those cro one of those disease organisms that we see sporadically depending on if it's a cool, cloudy season, we see more downy mildew than we see if we have bright, a bright winter in our greenhouses. Uh, downy mildew is one of those infestations though that if you can't control with a foliar application of sp because these spores, if you blast them all over the greenhouse, you've got a big problem. One of the best ways to control downy mildew that you're going to have is by scouting, scouting, scouting. And when you see an outbreak, go get a garbage bag, put it over the plants, tie it off, cut them off at the pot level, take them out and put them in the dump. That's the best way to control it because you can then do a minor spot application in that area and you can control it quite well. It's a lot easier to control that way than it is to control by spraying your whole greenhouse. Botrytis blight. Uh, botrytis is a common gray mold fungus. We see it under high humidity. We typically see it where we've got bruised tissue or where we have foliage or le um, petals uh, are easily damaged and they've got lots of sugars. Um, we see botrytis blight when we have free water on the foliage, free water on the petals. And so one of the ways to prevent botrytis problems in a greenhouse is if your plants are in bloom, don't use overhead water. So here's some example of botrytis blight on geraniums. These are on some poinsettias that are in the rooting bed uh, in vinca. And also we can see it on some overgrown stems. Root rot diseases, root rot fungi. Pythium is the primary one. It's, uh, we see that when the, when the soil is cold and wet. Um, poorly drained soil, we often see pythium. Uh, Rhizoctonia is a little warmer. Um, Thalaviopsis, we tip, used to only see Thalaviopsis outbreaks in uh, potting soil where the pH was too high, but we're starting to see Thalaviopsis even in low pH soils now. Uh, pythium is commonly, uh, it's a infection of the cortical tissue. Uh, we'll see um, uh, pythium development uh, where we have what's called wire root. You see on the very tip of that, you can see the edge of the end of the steel, the vascular steel. You look at these poinsettias where you see a lot of uh, stunting. And um, in these pansies, we actually have black root rot. Rhizoctonia, uh, the infection is more deep. It actually infects into the cortical area, through the cortical area, including the steel, um, vascular steel. Thalaviopsis, we call it black root rot, and the stems are typically blackened. Okay. You all have a safe holiday season. Probably two o'clock, two or three o'clock on Thursday. Many of you guys are going to be around on Thanksgiving. You know, the most amazing Thanksgiving dinners I ever had was a year that uh, I was, it was last year I was in graduate school. I was stuck 
on campus and, and we decided the night before to have an orphan's dinner. And we just went around and wandered all over town and invited people that we had no idea who we invited to an orphan's Thanksgiving dinner. 45 people showed up. It was wonderfully awesome. We had people that we had no idea who they were, you know, graduate students from other cultures and stuff like this, and we had an awesome time and got drunk as a skunk. But <laughs> yeah, Thanksgiving's my favorite. I'm not going home, so yeah. So, you know. Our maintenance guy at Edwards, he has one of those every year. He has for the past, like, 30 years. We're there for kids that can't go home. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I was looking at the